Today I'm joined by Rebecca Cutterman from Ray White Marsden, which is part of the AKG group in Brisbane. Beck is a really accomplished young woman who's running a high performance and high volume team and she's a leader of five people within her EBU. We're going to learn about the amazing things she does and, uh, and learn some surprises along the way. Thanks Beck. Thank you for having me. Okay, so um, I, I've, I've tackled the elephant in the room, not that I uh, you know, feel in any way like I misspent my youth, um, <laughs> but you are one of those amazing people who got into real estate straight out of school. Yeah, yeah, fell out um, and didn't actually remember applying for the job. <laughs> <laughs> so how did that happen? Um, it was that in between period of applying for uni and trying to find like work at the time. So I was just applying for anything and everything and yeah, got a call out to apparently I applied for a receptionist role. So went in, got the interview and got the job and yeah, I never went to uni. I never accepted the application. So yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. And so it wasn't that real estate was your calling or you were interested in the industry. It was just, it was a job. It was a job, 100%. Yeah. yeah, it was just, hey, I don't really, I'm not set on uni. Like this might just be trial it for a year, then decide where that sort of takes you. And I never left. And what was the uni course that you were looking at? Paramedicine. Wow. I definitely, <laughs> I'm so glad I never went. I just don't think studying is for me. Yeah, okay. Too yep. much of a short attention span. What was it about being a paramedic that interested you at that point in your life? Oh, I honestly just think it was something that everyone was, at that point it was either nursing or paramedicine. It was just something that everyone was sort of doing. I honestly don't think I had a drive. Thought it through that yeah, much, yeah. Yeah, it was just like, oh gosh, apply for something. Yep. So, yeah. So straight out of school. Now, um, we were just talking a moment ago about your family. You come from a very large family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> one so of seven kids. You're the middle child of seven. Yeah, it's different. <laughs> and we were talking about how that was like a motivator to actually be, become independent and mm. move out and, and, and sort of have a bit of space maybe. Yeah, or... I'm looking back now, I'm really thankful to have a big family. Yeah. Um, earlier on, I probably didn't appreciate it as much, yeah. but um, I, yeah, it, it helped me motivate myself to go get my own car, go find work, like fend for yourself in a way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, ultimately move out of home sooner. That was the goal. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's interesting if you look at so many young people now, people are, people your age, many people your age are still living at home mm. and older. Um, did you feel like that was a tough thing to do? Not like mentally, no, I, yeah. I was, wanting to hop like get out of home as yeah. soon as possible yep. um logistically probably yes that was yeah. harder than than um expected but where i was working at the time yeah it all just sort of fell into place with where to go and who to know and all that sort of thing so yeah. so that first job in real estate that was um working as a receptionist mm -hmm. yeah um company is not open now but like it's yeah the role itself was very diverse it was reception but it was a bit of Rental applications, um, accounts, it was, I think I even got thrown some prospecting calls at one point, which I had no idea were prospecting calls, mm. like it was just a bit of everything. Yep. Um, so I liked it for the fact that I got to see everything. Yeah, the diversity. Yeah, the diversity. Yep. Yeah, because being so young, I really didn't know what any of the terms were that they were referring to. And, and enjoyed that, like you say, probably quite a fast paced environment when you're having lots of different things put on your plate. Yeah. And yeah. something that we were talking about before as well is that, you know, you do actually have quite a good eye for detail, which is not always so. a, a trait that goes hand in hand with salespeople. Yeah. So after that initial reception job, you were then promoted to being, you were the office manager. Essentially, yeah. So. Um, Office manager down, yeah, when I, when I moved down south. So it was a bit of, again, bit of everything, um, which was great. But yeah, it was, uh, what do you call it? All your marketing, yep. like advertising, all that sort of assisting the sales agents, um, back in the property management mm -hmm. space, assisting the property managers. So mm -hmm. it was a small knit team, but mm -hmm. um, so it was a bit of a workload in that sense, but it was really good because I got, yeah, that diversity that I needed. And so at what mm. point did you realise that you wanted to actually work in the sales side of the business and get out of that operations piece? Um, I was let go earlier on at my partner at the time was in the sales agent uh, role. So when he left, I was moved on as well, being in like, uh, I guess a debatable space. 
Um, so at that point, I just applied for anything and everything. I was already on the south side. I was already away from home and my mm -hmm. family. So I just needed to make it work. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of when I found the role as a PA to an agent at the time. And yeah, that sort of just progressed from there. Yeah. And so what was that role initially? Was still doing PA work, so admin, admin work? Uh, primarily admin. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, oh, it was assisting at open homes, yeah. um, but very, very minor yeah. buyer management because I wasn't licensed, so I was still 17. Yeah, okay. So it was very much the back end yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, and then that, that role kind of didn't work out. Again, you found yourself moving. Yeah, so that's when I ended up at the role prior to Ray White. Um, and I was there for about 18 months, I would say. Yep. Um, I was finally able to turn 18, get my real estate license and actually work as a buyer's manager to yep. an agent at the time, which was the best role to be able to learn from yeah. somebody. Yeah. yeah. Um, thrown into so many different scenarios. Every property has got a different set of problems. Yeah, talking 100%. To buyers. Able yeah. to like learn the actual closing of a deal and the, the process of not just being the back end of the office, it was now I'm the back end from an agent side of things. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, being able to support that agent that I was working for was really valuable to my growth, for yeah. my growth, for sure. And that's where you met Arvi. Briefly, yeah. yes. So Arvi had already departed, um, yeah. but I knew of him through that role. So we'd stayed in touch and he reached out eventually when he opened Ray White Marsden. So I was one of the first that joined, or we were the first that joined um, when the business opened, coming up to six years. Now. And it's interesting listening to you talk about Arvi, your relationship with him and the way that he's helped you. It's clear that you have a lot of trust in him and he's been quite a big role in your development in as a sure. salesperson. Yeah, yeah. It's a, when I started, I was very, um, started with Arby, it was very green to like the listing side of things. Yeah. I'd only really been in that selling space for the agent at the time. Mm. Um, so yeah, when Arby opened his office, it was working primarily under him. Mm. So I was actually able to learn and actually see my first ever listing presentation and appraisal mm. and mm. all that sort of side of things. So having his mentorship there was really, really it's interesting yeah. because at this point in time, you would still have been 18, 19 yeah, years of age. Yeah. And you know, you're still a young woman at 25, although obviously very confident and very accomplished, but you did have, you know, earlier in your career, a little bit of potentially a bit of, um, you know, doubt from some people that maybe you were too young. Mm. How did you find, you know, it, we don't see many people your age who have accomplished what you have. Did you internally feel like your age was a barrier? Internally, to a very minor degree. Mm. Externally, I looked young, yeah. I hope. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was more, how can I leverage and put something else in front of them that's more important or, you know, yeah, more attention grabbing than just my age. Yeah. So I had to really work my butt off to be mm. like, yes, I'm young. I'll bring it up at the first instance. Mm. I'm young, but hey, I also don't have kids or a family or anything else that is taking my attention away. Whilst that's really important, yeah. I am here and totally present for your yeah. sale. So I had to work out where I was going to be able to get in mm. to the market over somebody else that had major experience and been in the area 30 plus years. So, so your strategy was to tackle it head on, 100%. talk about it straight up straight and then up. say, I've got yeah. more energy and more time. 100%. Yeah. At the end of the day, it was like an underdog coming in, being yeah. like, I want to prove myself yeah. to you. Let me do it. Yeah. Like, I've got the energy. I'm not coming in here all suave being like, yes, I've sold here. You know what I've done. Mm. Sign up with me. You've sort of got no other choice. It was, it was giving them an opportunity to actually, yeah, prove myself yeah. um, and I'm really thankful for those vendors that took that punt because it yeah, worked out. Amazing and so you, you came on board, you worked alongside Arby, mm. learning or like you, you hadn't been exposed to the listing mm. side before um, and at what point did you step out on your own? Technically when we opened, so I was working underneath Arby but it was still on my own mm. so he was just assisting in the listing side of things but the vendor management and all that sort of um, aspect was was my own so yeah. managing my own database growing that um, but yeah I would say without Arby attending 
those pitches was probably year two yep. um, or you know my second year um, in that sort of sales space. So it was a really nice gradual progression even though actually you were, you were moving through those milestones really quite quickly because if you think yeah. from 17. Yeah to... true I was probably a year and a half yeah, yeah in the back end. But do you, yeah. you know I think what's quite nice listening to you so many people want to rush to be yeah. doing it all but it sounds like you were quite willing to pushed in a way to okay. it which was good like yeah. they knew that it was okay this is the next step which yeah. is great yeah and you just trusted um, in that I just process. trusted that yeah so in that early stage when you were just starting to become your own agent and still getting assistance for listing and you know moving through that at that point in time did you think I'm going to do 120 plus sales one year was that was that a goal no Arvi will tell you I think I quit 20 times. Like, <laughs> I was like, this isn't for me. I'd lose however many in a pitch and I'd be like, this isn't for me. Mm. I am too young. I should just get something that's more salary based or what have you. I, I always just focused on the goal is just do better than before. Just yeah. do better than before. Even like when we had our good years, it was like, that's great. Let's just try and do that again. Yeah. So rather than having this outrageous goal that to me was daunting mm. like I didn't want to have that pressure on myself um, which probably I don't know works for others but for me it was like let's just know that you've put everything into each day mm. and if you truly have then it will work out yeah. um, and just sticking to that and that's literally we, we don't really have team goals even now it's like if we all know that we just need to do better than before yeah then that's all that matters because yeah. the rest will fall into place yeah where does that come from for you is that something that was drummed into you when you were growing up or is it just something that you intrinsically within yourself you just want to keep I just improving. want to imp keep improving 100% yeah. I don't want to have a, an outrageous goal yes I've got them but yeah. I tend to probably I don't know com like compose them a little bit more and just sort of go okay well how do I get there yeah. what's that process look like let's just focus on these little tasks everything else ultimately will then get you there anyways so Amazing. just breaking it's it so down good yeah, yeah and keeping it simple how do you mm. find now you lead a team and we'll, we'll talk about your team a bit more I don't want to go into that so much for now but do you find that you that's how you're bringing them on the journey as well like just giving them the next piece that's in front of them 100 percent. so we yeah. structure um the girls that are in my team now um, very similar to what how I would like to have been given that earlier on so everyone comes in regardless of their role they have to learn each and every person's duty um, so they need to understand the whole space to be able to then f prioritize their own space so we have sort of like a lead gen um, buyers manager and then ops manager so mm -hmm. anyone coming in will still learn everybody's position really? to understand the space yeah how much time so if I'm coming in to become your ops manager how much time will I spend learning the lead gen and the buyer manager piece probably minor like yeah. it, it but it's still something so yeah. we can all carry each other's weight if anyone's yeah. ever off um, and it's better for overall experience as well and for your own growth um, even if it's something that they might not want to learn now it might be something that at least now they've tried and tested and can be something that they can be working towards mm. so um, I just want to have everyone sort of know as much as they possibly can so if they're ever dealt with this ever having to deal with a situation that they're not aware of at least they've got something Smart. to sort of work with. Yeah. So if we go back to as your business started building like you, you you got to elite in your second year so you got to 60 plus sales in your second year of real estate and you did it pretty much on your own so well like within that yeah, second year yeah. you that's when you finally brought the person into your team so can you talk about like that period where it's starting to flow you're feeling in control it's your business mm. but then these businesses being what they are they're self-perpetuating and the growth comes sometimes really quick yeah. that wasn't you didn't necessarily want to grow a team initially yeah, it was, I feel like that happened, that 20 to 60 sales happened overnight. I, I just remember talking to Arby one day and just being like, man, I am, I am burnt out. I was like, I'm not burnt out physically, but I was like, there's no more hours in the day. Mm. Like I'm forgetting simple things and just simply not able to then process it. Um, it would be simple things like entry notices, trying to arrange a tenant inspection for, for the sale that we had. And it was at that point I was like, wow, things are actually finally clicking. Like mm. sales are 
slowly coming to me rather than me constantly chasing a little bit more. Um, and at that point where I could sit back and look at my business, if you will, um, and know deep down I truly am working my butt off. Mm. There's not a single hour left in this day to do any more. Yeah. Avi sort of then pushed me to go, you need somebody else. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and at that point I really did because it was just the mundane tasks that were chewing into everything else. And that was therefore affecting, I didn't want to have that trajectory that a lot of agents always had yeah. warned that they would have yeah. if they didn't manage it right. What was that? If you can remember where you were mentally at that point, what was it, what was it that made you kind of feel like you didn't want to grow the team? Was it that you didn't know what to give to them or maybe you just didn't like the idea of I think it probably was them? a lot of my yeah. age. Um, I was so, I still am quite like immature in a sense. And at that point it was really daunting having to think about giving somebody else direction. Mm. When I felt like I'm not experienced enough, like I'm still only a year and a half in, like yeah. how could I be a teacher to somebody else? Yeah. Um, I was like, I'm a kid. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think that was really alarming for me. Um, and just the overall fear of costs and, you know, what if it didn't work out? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was really the, the main the main point, oh, actually yeah. having to be a bit more of a leader and learn to delegate certain tasks that I'd become really close to. Attached to, yeah. yeah. No one can close fold this letter yeah, as well that, as that I 100%, can. Yeah, 100%, <laughs> yeah. The crease is yeah. perfect. <laughs> Um, so Arby kind of pushed you mm. and, and that first role for you was a part-time commitment? Yes, yeah. yeah. So uh, my first PA who's still in the business now was working with me between two, two and a half days um, a week yeah. for that for that year and that, that helped so, so much mm. um, both for me and her. Like we learnt so much about each other and how not to manage a team and but just overall it was really important that we had that sort of growth between ourselves um, and yeah ultimately she really did assist getting us to um, elite. That so when you say you learnt what not to do like and you probably now looking back but and you also with other agents when they take on their first associate it's very very common. Yeah. What, what would you say were the things that you just think are obvious that you got wrong in retrospect or you see other people do? To me it's just how you talk to them yeah okay <laughs> a lot of the time it's it's not intentional but you just assume i pay you therefore you work for me like yeah. it, it's it needs to be a team like yeah. it, it's not you work for me i'm going to throw everything like you're at a lower grade than i am not at all like everyone is equal mm -hmm. um everyone has a part and they are just as important as i am because yeah. if they're not there to help myself then i can't do my role so yeah. Um, just learning that quite early on to be like, you can't just throw them under the bus and, and hand them all the tedious tasks and not give them the time of day. Yeah. I always look at anyone I'm putting on now. If I feel they're not quite cutting it, it's like, well, hold on, look at yourself. Mm. Have you actually given them the time of day and have you actually taught them as much as you possibly can? Like, have you given them that structure? Have you actually given them a chance to grow? Um, and that's probably what I had to learn. How long did that take to learn? Because I know some, you know, 50 learning. year olds who haven't learned that yet. <laughs> I'm still learning. Yeah. But yeah, it probably became more obvious um, after my, my first PA transitioned out and I have my more current team now, the last two and a half years. Yeah. 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 Sort of yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Because I think sometimes high performers don't really understand that other people don't operate at that same mm -hmm. level. And so the, the expectation can be, well, you've got to do it as well as me or it's got to be to my standard otherwise you're not in the team yeah. but if there's only a small percentage of the population who can operate at that level you have to exactly work it around that yeah. so how did you how did you feel comfortable with I suppose what may have seen be seen as a compromise or mm. the standards maybe I changing? always everyone is different but if it's a certain role that is my weakness how many people in the world would actually want to do that specific role? Um, and to me, that was admin. Like, mm. whilst I was great at it, I really didn't want to do it anymore. I knew yeah. it wasn't dollar productive. Yeah. Um, but it was also a role I happened to see a lot of people turn over quite quickly in. Um, and to me, it was, well, it takes a lot of time to teach them that stuff about what I like and how I li we like it done and mm. what works best. So um, for me, 
possibly finding somebody like my current ops manager who handles all of that, I compromised with her work schedule and it works. Like mm. she works till two, mm. um, but she's somebody that loves that role. Yeah. Like she's not left, she's been there two and a half years. So yeah. um, finding the man like the management and structure that works for the right person, mm. whilst it might not have been full time that I would have loved, mm. it, it she helps in so many other aspects. Mm. So you mentioned to me before that like everyone has clearly got their lane that they swim in. That was the term you used. What are the roles and how long did it take you to come up with those? That, yeah. yeah, the the blueprint. Um, I think I was actually speaking to a couple of the agents at the last maybe two years worth of elite conferences. Mm. Um, and everyone became really structured and being like, this is what this person does, this is what they do, and this is what the agent does. So I sort of just took bits and pieces mm. and met with different agents. And um, it trialed, it was trial and error with each and every associate I had at the time. Um, for me, it was always, we'll tailor it to that person a little. Um, the current team I've had have probably been, well, Susie, my um, ops has been with me two and a half years. My Lead gen has been a year and a half, maybe roughly, um, and my buyer's, buyer's manager is quite relatively new. So that's a new role that we mm. only just implemented and I wish we did earlier on. Mm. It was actually something that everyone kept saying I needed, but I didn't quite understand how, how. It yeah, how it would fit. And now that we have it, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's taken some time and it will always change, I think, with who is in the team and mm. at what stage of their career they are they at and mm. where do they want to go. So I'll always change it and try and make sure that they're looked after so hopefully they don't leave. It might just be in a different capacity that they're in the mm. team. So um, yeah, it's taken a bit of time, but I've really liked seeing the structure now. I was not a detailed person. That was my ops manager. Mm. <laughs> um, but now that I've got it clear and it's in front of everybody and everyone's really knowledgeable in their role it's yeah it's like clockwork so great and then you don't have duplication people mm. going over top of each other yeah conflict over who does 100 percent. but because clear. we all know each other's role um it's something that we all learnt as we began if someone's ever gone like my lead gem was gone for a month and a half we all sort of wow. carried the weight so um it it's able to smoothly like transition if anyone ever needs a break mm. or yeah, it's having personal time. Like it just sort of works in that sense. Um, yeah. I'd like to talk about the volume at which you operate because mm. how many how many transactions did you do last financial year? Uh, about one thirty six. One hundred and thirty six yeah. sales. Yeah. So we've got there's lots of offices, like whole offices, mm. that won't sell that many properties in a year, and you've done that with your EBU, your, your yeah. team of four. So. You obviously have to be efficient. You have to be really cognizant of where your time goes. How do you how do you structure your day? Like, what is what does a typical day in in Beck's life look like? Madness. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's organised chaos. Uh, for me personally, I really am just responsible for vendor management, closing closing deals, um, and pipeline. Yeah. So everything else is primarily out to different different roles. So. I'll be at appraisals, listing presentations, closing negotiations, um, vendor managing, yeah. delegating. Yeah, that's that's all I do. And do you in the gist? <laughs> yeah, only just just 136 sales, yeah. just a little bit, and 14 members. Um, how, do you see that there's an endpoint for you? Do you see like, oh, there's a number that I'll stop at, or for you, is it, are you continuing to go like, what's the next step for me? What's is that really important to keeping you engaged in your business? Um. Earlier on, I mentioned like we've always just been make sure it's better than before. Yeah. Um, I actually feel like the year just gone, like the financial year just gone, we did worse. And I try not to say that out loud because in my mind, I was like, we did less sales, but we grew in other areas, grew in GCI and everything else. So um, it's just look better yourself at the end of the day. And mm. I just want to make sure that the team is sturdy, that the numbers are still great, that we're mm. still managing. And ultimately, I want to be able to I want to trial growing a team within a team, if that makes sense. Yep. So being able to give opportunity Co to agents. Those, yeah, hundred percent. So yeah. yeah. Um, so that's sort of what I would really like to focus on yeah. moving forward. Which is exciting for the people in your team because they then can continue growing as well. Uh, yeah. And there's less reason yeah. for them to move on and do that on their own. I'm all still so young. So yeah. I like have a very, I guess, close to home where I don't want to have them sort of lost 
out on their own or, or not sure or potentially leaving the industry because they weren't given that sort of pathway, I yeah. would really like to offer that. That's um, exciting. Yeah. And so when you're operating at the levels that you are, like, yes, youth gives you energy, but how do you keep yourself going the way that you do? Um, lots of men like check-ins with yourself. I'm quite... I think I do thrive on being able to work. Like, if I'm yeah. not working, I'll actually be worse off. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I have an end point. When I start to feel like I'm becoming run down, I'll be very selfish in the sense that, no, I'm going and booking a massage. No, I'm going, like, I'm doing this. Yeah. Hey, I'm forwarding my phone. Like, yeah. it might not be as frequent as others, but to me, like, of a Wednesday night, I'm out. I'm from 6.30 till 8.30, I'm not contactable. Yeah. Outside of that, I'll come back in and I'll work after that. But yeah. I'm very clear in being like, do not try and double book yourself. Yeah. Um, and when I need that break, just take it. Yeah. <laughs> Whilst everyone else might still push me to do Yeah, that. because yeah. it's, you know, if, you, if, if you're not right, how can you continue to do everything else, everything else yeah. for everyone yeah. else? For sure. Um, and um, a beautiful hobby that you have is horse riding. Yeah, I'm starting back into that. So that's yeah. something that's been in your life always, uh, from being a young kid? I was very minor when I was really, really young. I yeah. actually don't happen to remember a lot of it. I was probably less than six when I was right. riding. Yeah. Um, but it was something that my, my sister did, so I yeah. grew up with, um, yeah. and then I just lost it over, over the years. So I needed a hobby. <laughs> so coming back to your question, like, what do you do like to keep on track that was something that I had to find about three years ago so that's mm. when I went okay well I want to have something that I can detach from my phone um, for an hour or two mm. and that's my Wednesday night that's my Sunday morning like yeah. that's just my time where you can't think about anything else yeah so, mindfulness yeah, 100% on yeah. seven foot up in the air where you've got to concentrate <laughs> otherwise yeah. the... oh, I was gonna get killed yeah like. that's right yeah there's some pretty big yeah. consequences if yeah. you take your yeah. own you can't be yeah. horse riding and texting exactly at the same time. Yeah. yeah that's the one thing I love it's I well whilst I can have my phone on me I'm I choose not to yeah it's, yeah it's my time it's good mm. to have boundaries yeah. yeah what would you if you were to summarize like the things that have made you successful so like the two or three things that you've done along the way or that you still do mm. in your business, what do you think are the things that make your business work and maybe other people that you've seen along the way haven't, haven't worked as well? We are, whilst we're probably not a numbers business, it's not something that we openly talk about, we are really clear on at the beginning of the year, we, if we are wanting to do this level of sales, this is the connect rate, this is the conversion rate, therefore we need to be doing this. So we are a numbers business in that sense um, and everyone else's energy is just really surrounded on that is the goal. So mm. um, we're really clear on those tasks and having that um, separation in the roles has been um, allowing it to sort of flow. Um, but how do you communicate that to your team? Like how frequently are you talking to them about it? Is it just the meetings? Are you reporting on emails? How do yeah, you... so we'll do a monthly wrap up once yeah. a month um, of a breakdown of our current stock in, our current stock out, how mm. we're on track for the end of financial, um, any sort of other changes or things we're wanting to discuss as a team about maybe different marketing or upcoming community events. So we'll do a breakdown in that sense to keep everyone, I guess, accountable, mm. um, but also getting them to envision the end goal as well, because whilst I might know that we're on track, they also need to know where they're at mm. um, for us it has been a bit more of a numbers game like yeah. we've always just looked at the marketplace that we're in and gone okay well what does that agent do if they're number one mm. we need to do 10 times more yeah okay. um, so that was me even when I was on my own it was okay well if I'm coming in I'm younger I need to really prove myself mm. so I'm going to drop four times a week like or I'll, yeah. you know however many times however many hours a day like two hours a day it was just do more of outwork them a hundred percent yeah just work them outwork them and so, it was interesting you talk about mm. the market like when you came in as a 21 -ish whatever it was year yeah, old 20, yeah who looked younger mm. um the person you were going up against was like a an established older male mm, yeah <laughs> and, <The> opposite <laughs> yeah like that would have been quite daunting yeah it was it was a good challenge though for me like yeah. I really liked being able to go in and just be like I'm gonna talk about it even though you might not bring it up to my face after I lost a few where they said hey it was you know maybe you're too young or this or that it was like okay well I'm just gonna bring it up even if I don't 
think that they mm. may have that in the back of their mind. I'd rather pinpoint my advantage um, or my opinion, my advantage um, and just leverage off of that. Mm. So w that then flowed on to, you know, they eventually saw me repetitively more in their face. I was just doing more. Mm. It was sort of like, how could you look elsewhere mm. when this girl is actually proven herself? Mm. Um, so, and we've just continued to do that. Like mm. we've never dropped off on our letterbox drops. Our mail outs are still consistent. Um, our number of calls have increased. Everything has increased with the numbers that we've wanted to do. Um, and we've just continued on that. So that's one of the, I mean, I think that's, that's actually un unusual. It sounds mm. basic to be consistent at things, but it is, it's so hard for It's others. the greatest, yeah, yeah, because there are so many different buckets of work in this that's job. It. If you don't put a person on the job, but that's mm -hmm. what you've done. You've put people yeah. in their lanes, yeah. so that keeps happening. When I was on my own, or when I, when I was on my own, um, I was really clear in going, okay, well, if I've got 12 hours in a day, what are the dollar productive hours that people are contactable in? Yeah. Um, and what are the non-dollar productive tasks? Mm -hmm. And I'll do them at hours that yeah. people aren't available. Yeah. Um, so I'd be folding letters at midnight and I'd be dropping DLs at five o'clock in the morning. Like yeah. it was just make use of the valuable time yeah. um, that you have. It's, hey, if, we, if we've got eight hours or however many hours of contactable call time, make use of that. Do mm -hmm. your admin at night or yeah. structure that on a different day or a, or a different sort of time in your day to break it up so you're not getting burnt out. So. Yeah. Um, same with like our buyers manager, schedule your appointments for a certain time that doesn't then muck you around with traffic mm. or, or other things. So mm. just be really wise with what you're doing and when. when. Um, so then that can then bleed out to other different areas. It'll free up your time mm. ultimately if you're making better use of. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's Everything. such good advice. Um, what is the future for you? What is the next step, <laughs> I should say? Well, like I said, I think I would really like to grow my own team and one day have an, my own office for whenever that is. But yeah, ultimately grow the team and see their journey because that to me gives me enjoyment. Um, probably more enjoyment than selling. Um, being able to sort of give them a pathway to something else and see that they're hitting their own goals. Um, it's really Amazing. exciting. Amazing. And what's something about you that people might not know about you that's not out there in the public domain? I guess I was like a competitive cheerleader at one point. Amazing. I can see <laughs> the pom poms. Just, yeah, definitely. <laughs> You're being thrown um, in the air. I was thrown in the air, yeah. It was definitely a good thrill. I've stayed on that, like, I always need something that will keep me excited and nervous at the same time. Yeah. Like, I need something that's a bit more thrilling. So, yeah, yeah being thrown in the air at however many metres high was, wow. yeah, that was cool. Not quite as, as frightening as doing an interview for Elite Agent magazine. This is way <laughs> more nerve-wracking. <laughs> it's been so yeah. good talking to you, Beck. Thank, Thank you. you for your Thank time. you for having me. It was Appreciate great it. to chat. Thanks. Thanks.